Taurus. Taurus, this is your forecast for September of 2013. And uh, we're looking at a month now that is opening up the autumn doors. And yes, this year has really rolled on fast, really, hasn't it? So this month here, your son is moved into the fifth house of uh, joy and happiness. It is a playful month for you. Um, even though it's kind of a little late in the season, maybe for uh, vacation, but for those of you who can take off this month, would be a grand time. The sun and the new moon is in this area for you, which is all about not just uh, leisure and hobby, but also romance. For those of you who are in a relationship, it should be a very good month for it. And for those of you who uh, are single, well, this could be the time you might meet somebody that could really fascinate you. Now this new moon is going to be on September 5th. So when we have our new moons, as you all know by now, it is the time where we plant our seeds. Really get them in the ground and, and the, the focus and the attention and the affirmation should all be about allowing yourself now in months to come to have more time for this type of pleasure. It's like creating space and room and promising yourself so that this whole full year until next year you won't have the chance to do this affirmation in this very area. Uh, fifth house is also all about creativity and um, uh, creative projects so many of you might see that you might start something and if you do it's a perfect perfect time of the year to do so because of not only the area but the new moon that's going to help you kind of propel it in towards those future horizons and then we have Venus uh, it's in your sixth sector uh, sixth house and uh, that will give you more time now here to actually organize what needs to be organized for you. Um, it's in the house of Virgo, so Virgo will always be very analytical in this area. And it resonates good with you because you are a Taurus. So for you, it's all about how can you practically now get things together so you can start lifting and rising. How can your daily routines behoove you instead of steal away from you time-wise, and time is money, so uh, maybe you want to get up an hour earlier to squeeze in something that will free you for the rest of the day, which ultimately adds up throughout the week and the month, of course. So look to those things. Venus is also what we love, you know, and uh, look at your foods and diets this month because sixth house also denotes what you eat, how you eat, and how this can really perfect your health to a much higher standard. Then we have also Mars, and Mars this month is through the home and family sector. And uh, Mars can get a little rowdy, you know, when it wants to, but it also gives us drive, it gives us ambition, it gives us that, that push through that we need to have in order to move things forward, in order, in order to square things away. But you have it in the sign of Leo, so, you know, Leo, if it's not happy, it might, you know, vocalize something a little loudly this month. Um, we can get back to the aspects when that might be happening a little bit later. But basically, it's also a fun time because uh, Leo loves fun. Mars is giving you more action to create more, uh, which I say downtime and leisure time at home and become more active within your space and see how you can actually bring it up to some new levels. Whatever has been lying dormant will now become very active again. And then we have Jupiter, and Jupiter is uh, the expansion that we all look for, the, all those good expansions. And where is this coming to you here at Taurus this month? It's in your third house, so for you, the best way to use this energy would actually take yourself on small little road trips because the third house are shorter trips, ninth house are long distance foreign trips. But for you to get out and about, this is where you're gonna find how you can um, recharge your batteries uh, and get your hopes and spirits up. 
and where you can come to meet people also that are uh, pretty much resonating on this level of being generous and abundant with, with how they share their time, and how they communicate and listen to you. And uh, I feel for many of you uh, now, Torians, it, it's been somewhat of a difficult time for many of you due to Saturn here opposing your sign, kind of like uh, clenching you or holding you to the grindstone. But Jupiter, you must have noticed just these last couple of months, is starting to give you more of a boost upward um, in how you communicate. Uh, third house is all about communication. What you communicate and how you do it, at least Jupiter is more now starting to see that the glass is half full rather than half empty. And it's also giving you more of a boost on your uh, emotional, spiritual sides as well because it is the sign of Cancer. Um, and the Cancerians are very sensitive. It's a water sign. This is bringing all of these energies up towards you. And you also want to look at how you're eating because uh, uh, the sign of Cancer, the Cancerians, they rule um, their stomach, their digestion, and so forth. So Jupiter will sometimes bring a lot of rich food into the picture just because Jupiter loves to eat and eat a lot. And that might have had a little bit to do here of how you digest. So there might be a little um, tweaking going on there, especially because that Venus is in your sixth house for, for dieting and paying attention to how you can balance things. Then we move on here to Saturn, still blocking your seventh house for committed relationships, partnerships, marriage. Uh, some of you are still feeling that, that this is um, holding you back or holding your expression back or having to work really deeply with uh, your uh, structures within yourself and, and what you no longer want. And uh, these, these rings of Saturn might leave you feeling somewhat confined in this area. But the flip side of that, and the good way to use Saturn here, since it's in the house of partnerships, you might want to look to how you can secure, because that's what Saturn does. It secures uh, partnerships, uh, working partnerships, uh, and if you're starting a new business, or you're working very closely one-on-one -on -one with somebody on some project, well then Saturn is really good to have here. And you only have it once every 28 years, so look to that aspect. That might lift you a little bit up and out of the rut that you might feel is on hold on other levels. Then we have Uranus. Uranus is in your 12th house. Uh, we have spoken about that the last few months. and They're very slow-moving planets and will be with you here, you know, still for a few years. But uh, perhaps some of you are starting to tune into what it's doing with your subconscious nature. That's what the 12th house is. It's what you sense. It's what you feel. It's uh, uh, not necessarily all these external things, though it could be, uh, but the internal spiritual side and message of Uranus for you uh, in this placement would be, how can I free myself? How can I become more of who I am? Because, see, Uranus is the planet of liberation and it liberates us, it separates us, it divorces us from those situations that keep us down and earthbound and, and uh, mm, tightened so we can't move. That's of the earth, but see, spirit releases everything. So your way up and out of the struggle that you may still be having here for another two years because Saturn moves slowly and it is what's holding you down. You can choose to, you know, go with it and have that focus on it and feel those restrictions. Or you can start listening to how Uranus is trying to free you up and say, hey, wake up, there's a different way. You know, attuning to spirit will prompt you, it will guide you, it will inspire you, lead you. But you need to listen within in order to start getting these messages filtering through because you're, you're transforming. And this will definitely show once Uranus is out of that 12th area and into your first house. This is when you're going to start showing the world exactly how much you've changed over these last couple of years. So 
it is that time for you to reach for those higher realms of spirit and knowing that you're a spiritual being having an earthly experience. Now most of you have probably thought it was the other way around, that we're earth beings, maybe having a spiritual experience if we choose. So this switch, that is your Pluto in the ninth house, where spirit is transforming you to kind of look up and out towards new horizons, because the ninth house, this area where it's located, is uh, all about uh, what's on the horizons there ahead in the future and opening one's mind and heart, uh, mind, body, spirit, body, up towards more of the philosophical questions of life to start seeing that you belong into a larger matrix than you ever had imagined. It's not just where we walk, talk, eat right here, right now, but, but how we all tie into a larger, vast oneness. This is going to be the big OMGs, the oh my gods, of your next few years because slowly but surely Taurus, trust me, you're going to be transforming these areas of what you never would have thought was possible. So thank God, yes, they move very slowly, these planets. If not, you would probably be shocked if you just woke up three, four, or five years from now into that new you and realize how much you have transformed. Now you also have Neptune too in your 11th house. And Neptune is your, your higher self, inner uh, guidance. It's also your hopes and dreams, and it's what you visualize. And this is in your 11th house. And um, so where where is all of this inspiration going to come from? How are you going to be transforming, and where is it coming from? Well, I'm seeing how you're going to be attracting new people, new friends. And they won't be just into money wanting to secure the material or wanting the, the good luxury items and status symbols. And this is where pretty much a lot of you Taurians have been because that is what you're here for. That's what Taurians do. You know, that's the area of your chart that you rule. But with all of these spiritual energies going on, all of you as a group are awakening to, yes, uh, values are and wealth uh, also, it's not just in the material realm, you can have a wealth of spirituality and wisdom that brings out love, higher levels of love, and really incorporating a totally new world. So you'll be finding that probably in the social networks, in groups of people, the 11th house has everything to do with groups and organizations, um, and you could do that online. Ninth house is foreign, uh, countries, could also be foreign cities from you, so some of you might be, be finding yourself navigating uh, out maybe with groups uh, to, to have some events. But enough of that, that's your outer planets, and uh, I touch upon it a little bit every month, but we can't spend too much time there either. Now, top of the month, we have Pluto and Venus. They are trying, and this is on September 1st. And uh, the great thing about those two planets, they, they create a, a cut through, uh, straight to the core, some kind of decision where you're aligning yourself with what this new idea or um, decision is gonna be about, and then kind of shutting the door to something else. So it's like a quick switch there. On the 5th, uh, we mentioned it earlier, you got the new moon in the 5th house. Time for affirmations to tell yourself that it's not just all going to be about work here this year, you know, between now and September of next year. You're also now affirming that a little bit every month you're going to set more time aside to have fun for self-expression and joy and just hanging loose and feeling like you're in love, whether you have a partner or just being in love with the universe. There's many ways to be in love. Then we have here on uh, the 10th, Venus is going to move out of this area of trying to organize and restructure your your day-to-day -day routines. It's going to move into the area of love and romance and committed relationships. So this would be a time where you could find somebody new or it could also just be working one-on-one -on -one, very tightly with somebody and feeling that there is a very good synergy and a way of relating to one another going deeper than what you have in the past. And on the 13th and 14th, well, we do have uh, Venus and uh, Neptune. 
that ties in with your hopes and dreams and ambitions and aspirations great time to really start seeing that you might have just harvested something of those things that you started you know with your affirmations last year also we have Mars kicking into action with something uh, that might trigger an unexpected event this is on the 14th Mars is uh, the rocket engine and Uranus is like the nuclear engine which speed things up where you can start seeing a uh, um, acceleration perhaps on those projects that you've been working on and for you this will be in the area of the home and also from some subconscious need or urge of wanting to kind of push through and create whatever this new cycle is in the home related area. Venus and Saturn are going to be meeting up here on the 18th. Now this could be both good or it can also be experienced a little uh, heavy because Venus is love and Saturn is that planet with rings that constrict and hold us down and this is in the area of partnerships and relationships so you might feel that whatever is going to be communicated here on this day uh, may be touching you in a way that is mm, heartfelt um, but I'm also seeing that it, it can also uh, finalize something that you've been trying to work with and getting you onto a new level with this partner in agreement and that agreement may have a very long lasting commitment because it is in the house of commitments and Saturn is what locks it in. Same day you've got Venus and Pluto too so it's a very intense day emotionally for you and uh, Pluto is in your ninth house that has to do with higher understanding and uh, uh, those things that you are seeking uh, how to transform yourself into that new you so whatever is taking place here with Venus and Saturn whatever agreements are there this is also setting you free with a new intensity of the new you just starting to scrape the surface of transforming that personal self that, that you're trying to reach for so very important time for you and I'd say mark a couple days prior couple of days after because the effect is going to be lasting for that long and then it's going to align you with your point of destiny here uh, on the 18th and 19th as Venus also touches the moon node okay so whatever is taking place here is meant to happen it's not by coincidence uh, the universe never makes any mistakes and uh, having both Saturn and Pluto uh, working the way they are working it's something that you have known about so it's not one of those uranian out of the blue oh my god situation this is something that has created a lot of work taken a lot of time but you're freeing yourself pluto's going to move direct here same day 19th and it's been uh, retrograde and sleeping the energy of pluto has been sleeping for for many many months and for you it's going to release this uh, forward motion this direct motion in the area of transforming your higher self okay some of you might uh, feel now that you're going to want to start studying or reaching for these new things but definitely pluto is going to be supporting you on the 20th you might feel the need to kind of pull back and just heal yourself you know pull the blanket over your head or something as you allow the stress of that past week to start falling into place because um, now you're going to might feel that here comes the reaction you'll have the energy as long as you need it and then of course when the reaction comes that's only when you first understand how tired or exhausted you may be that won't last long because energy is picking up and I see a lot of joy here as we come in towards the end of September uh, between uh, the 20th there to the 26th well you've got good planets lining up starting to kind of really percolate up towards joy here with Venus and uh, Jupiter which is going to expand this area that now you can start doing things that you want to do it's not always now just about the others but what you would like to do and for you it's all about now trying to find um, a balance between uh, <clears throat> who you communicate with uh, attracting new people into your life also if you're working in a partnership work related 
great time to sign some contracts or also make some um, new decisions. You know, maybe products are going to start lifting because in this area of communication, this is where this is going to come from. It's going to expand it for you and you'll start seeing a financial comeback on it. Yes, uh, profits on return there for you. So that's pretty much what we have for you this month now, uh, Taurus, and I wish you a very good September, and do go listen to your rising sign and your moon sign, just to get the different, a different perspective and scope on it. And I do want to also mention the full moon on September 19th, great day to harvest something here for you, coming in the area of hopes, dreams, wishes, and in the cycle of friendships and so forth. So I'll see you next month, Taurus.